incredible sight in Winnipeg tonight. Fans continuing to file into IG Field for the first CFL game in 620 days. Now, before kickoff, it is time to introduce you to the song of the season. It is called What You're Made Of by Stephen Lee Olson. It's a joy to be back here in Canada, man, getting back with my brothers, getting back with the coaches, and just having football back. You already know results speak louder when you get wild to get wilder, baby. <laughs> what makes you wake up in the morning? What you 10,000 hours? Would you give your life for it? Right, Is that voice getting louder? Everybody's got a dream that nothing's getting in the way. What's up, family? taken a little longer than expected, but the 2019 Grey Cup banner will finally be raised in Winnipeg tonight. That's coming up next on the CFL on TSN. It's a matchup steeped in the rich history of the National Classic. It's been 29 years since Winnipeg last won it all. Two decades for Hamilton. Who makes history tonight? Here's Andrew Harris. Big hole. Harris. Touchdown. The leading rusher in the Canadian Football League. Three years in a row. And boy, he had a jump to his step. And it's caught. Touchdown. Andrew Harris in traffic. They can feel it. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers can taste this. Zach Kolaris chipped in with the passes he needed, and their defense dominated. It is celebration time. All the haters out there, this is for you. They have put the win back in Winnipeg. The Blue Bombers, 2019 Great Cup champions. IG Field hosting the first CFL game in over 20 months, a rematch of the 107th Grey Cup. I think we can all agree. After the layoff, it is hard not to appreciate this game and what its history means to this country. As mentioned, it is the unveiling of the Grey Cup banner. Let's head there now and join Sarah Orleski. Ladies and gentlemen, 
please welcome from TSN, Sarah Orleski. Good evening, everyone. It is so great to see so many of you here inside IG Field. Welcome back, Bombers fans. And of course, welcome back to all of the CFL fans watching across the country right now as we get ready to kick off the 2021 season here in Winnipeg. We look forward to not only game one of the season between the Blue Bombers and Hamilton Tiger Cats, but also the opportunity to see the 2019 Grey Cup banner raised here at IG Field. To begin tonight, 150 years ago this week, on August 3rd, 1871, Treaty 1 was signed between Indigenous leaders and the British Crown, representing a remarkable agreement between Indigenous communities and Canadians. And Manitoba's first since Métis leaders led this province into Canada's Confederation in 1870. While Treaty 1 was intended to have all peoples share in the riches and resources of these lands, we have much work to do to heal the injustices of the past and build a brighter future in Manitoba together. In this spirit, and to celebrate these in two important milestones, the Winnipeg Football Club would like to recognize that IG Field is located on Treaty 1 land, traditional territories of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, Lakota and Dene peoples and resides in the homeland of the Métis Nation. They commit to a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration and dedicate to move forward in partnership with one another in all they do. Now, as a part of this commitment, we draw your attention please to the south side of the stadium where the club proudly will fly the Métis flag and the Treaty 1 flag in their home field to honour these important milestones. Please join us as representatives from the Manitoba Métis Federation and Treaty 1 raise the flags on behalf of all in the community. When the Blue Bombers won the Grey Cup back in November 2019, no one could have predicted what was to come. And over the past 20 months, Blue Bomber fans have been waiting for the chance to get back together to celebrate the unveiling of the first championship banner at IG Field. I ask you to turn your attention to the video boards. COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. It is now official. Canada has its first confirmed case of coronavirus. The CFL season has been officially called off. The moment surrounding the announcement when I found out it was extremely sad. One of the saddest days I've had in a long, long time. Like everybody else, you move forward and get on board to working towards a plan for 2021.
welcome the president and CEO of the Winnipeg Football Club, Wade Miller. Welcome back to IG Field. It's been too long. This uh, championship banner is for each Blue Bomber fan in this stadium, Manitoba, and across this country. I ask you to turn your attention to the south end and let's unveil this banner and then let's play some football. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome head coach Orlando Steinauer and the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Actually, you know what? Let's bring out the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. We 
stand on God for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on God for thee. Hello, Canada. We've been waiting a long time to say it and never have two words meant so much. Welcome back. Canadian football is back and it is emotional in this building right now. I can tell you that Zach Kolaris was the final piece of the puzzle in the 2019 campaign, the championship season for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Great career numbers, many in these parts wondering what can he do with a full season. It starts tonight. Jeremiah Masoli, last time he played two years ago, suffered a injury out for the season. Dane True. Evans took over. He's the starter tonight for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And of course, the last time these two teams met, they met for the Grey Cup in 2019. Coach Rolando Steinauer, the coach of the year, led the Hamilton Tiger Cats to 15 win season, more than any season in Tiger Cat history. And Michael O'Shea gets another great cup ring. Goosebumps here tonight <laughs> as we watch that pregame ceremony. The banner unfurling here at IG Field, the first banner of its type. It's been a long time. And it's the longest reigning Grey Cup champions because last year was wiped out, of course, because of the pandemic. A season was wiped out. A league was shut down. And now, together tonight, the Canadian Football League rises up. Yeah, you really get the feeling, don't you, Rod, that this is more than a football game for sure. The emotion in the stands, the banner here in Winnipeg, the 11th championship. But maybe more than that, everyone's together, hugging each other. You can hug your grandmother. You can cheer for your favorite team. We can shake your hand. We can, we, shake, we can hands. shake hands. And, and the good news is everyone is here tonight. The fans are here tonight. All showing their vaccination. Passports beforehand had to show that before they came in. And we've got a... Full house here. Janarian Grant is back. It's been 620 long days. Hamilton Tiger Cats are going to kick off the 2021 season. Let's play football again. The CFL is back. Marion Grant from his 20 after the kick from newcomer Taylor Berlin, the Tiger Cats. And here comes Zach Caleros. And Caleros, all he did when he came at the trade deadline for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers was win. Yeah, 4 0 in the regular season for Winnipeg. Then, of course, that postseason run that culminated against the Hamilton Tiger Cats and the championship. But Zach spent his offseason improvising and figuring out how to continue to train with all the protocols that were in place. First give in the backfield is to Brady Oliveira taking for Andrew Harris tonight who was out with injury. Won't be a long term injury according to his head coach Michael O'Shea but they are being very careful. There's the old line up front and if you've watched bomber football You've seen Stanley Bryant, Jamarcus Hardrick on the edges. Be a good matchup to watch against Jagera Davis and Julian Hauser tonight. There's the receiving core. Oliveira in the starting tailback position for Andrew Harris. And what a championship for Harris two years ago now. Tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Expedia. Galaros going deep here for Kenny Lawler. Tip drill. And it could have been intercepted, so a very quick two and out for the defending Grey Cup champions will have to boot the football away. You see Lawler on this post route, he's, he's just going to get some inside leverage, but he does a nice job of making sure that this isn't intercepted because the newcomer in the secondary, Channing 
Stribling is in better position. And Lawler knocks it out of his hands. New kicker for the first time in quite some time for the Blue Bombers. Justin Medlock not here. Mark Leggio, a 42-yard kick for Frankie Williams. New number this year for the most outstanding special teams player from 2019. Goes from 37 to 1. Said he just wanted a single digit. <laughs> well, let's take a look at the Hamilton offense. And here comes Jeremiah Masoli. It was a great competition in training camp between he and hey, Dane Evans, who, of course, Hamilton, finished the season. Masoli in Week 7 Can against this Winnipeg Blue Bomber, Bomber team. Down. Lost the rest of the year to injury back in 2019. I like the decision, Coach O, Coach o going with Jeremiah Masoli. He said the competition was great. They were both leaders for this football team, but he thought Masoli had paid the price. He had worked his way and paid his dues to get to that starting spot. Through for over 5,000 in 18. Was on pace for a career best in 19 before the injury. He'll lead the Ticats tonight and in the near future. You saw that return taken back because of a holding call. So lost significant yardage. And uh, Sean Thomas Erlington, last time he played, also a couple of years ago, went out with a leg injury. Willie Jefferson making that first play. Here's the Ticat O-line. Okay, so Chris Van Zyl, the veteran offensive lineman for Hamilton, you know that name. He is out, and again, not long term. So Okafor, K. Okafor will play that spot. MOP Brandon Banks in the receiving core. Star studded event tonight. We've got a lot of the stars out here. Oh, everything's shining tonight. Second and eight. Masoli. First pass to Brandon Banks. The most outstanding player of 2019. His first touch of 2021 gets a first down for the Cats. MOP season over 1500 yards you go back to the 2019 season and you know, oftentimes the MOP gets a lot of weight put on the quarterback position as it should but when you have the type of season that Banks had in 19 it's, it's a no brainer MOP is back nine yard pickup first down Masoli chucking it to the near side here for David Ungerer. The Cats are now with uh, Luke Tasker, who has retired and is working with the Hamilton Tiger Cats broadcast unit. Braylon Addison not playing tonight. Here is the D-line, and this is an award-winning D-line, too. Well, that's the that's the K Okafor matchup with maybe the most dominant player in the last three years on defense. He'll have for several oh, days. That's trouble. So that's going to be trouble. a problem. Yeah, yeah. and he take a look at the secondary. Some newcomers back there. We'll get into that as the game goes on. Play action with Soli. Looks like it could have been caught. Was it? Yes, they signal a catch from Jalen Acklin. Jalen Acklin, all he did a couple of years ago, the Western Illinois product, was catch footballs in his rookie season. Well, a lot of weapons for Jeremiah Masoli. And Another first down, high snap, turns and hands it off to Sean Thomas Erlington. And STE, the former Montreal Caravan, who had such a great start and then derailed by injury back in the backfield again for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Important in protection, especially with those two defensive ends for the Bombers, Jackson Jeffco and the man I mentioned, Willie Jefferson. Again, there's there's more pure pass rush Charleston Hughes lots of guys that can play defense in this league but to me number five is the most dominant defensive player of the last three years Blue Bombers look to rush three drop back and passing now is Masoli and caught again by Brandon Banks right in front of Josh Johnson and Brandon Banks two targets two catches 24 yards for Speedy B. Well, two things here. One, the mobility and the ability to throw on the run from Masoli rolling to his left as a right-handed quarterback is awful difficult. He makes it look easy, but the adjustment by the MOP and Brandon Banks to run under that one, that was thrown high to the outside shoulder to avoid the defender, and Banks ran it down. An offense that was clicking on every cylinder two years ago with Masoli or Dane Evans. Right out of the chute, going deep down that far sideline to the end zone. Oh, it's caught for a touchdown. Jalen Acklin, what a catch, what a play, what a start for the Tiger Cats.
many that talked about throughout the month the return of Canadian football thought that it may be a little sloppy out of the gate without a preseason shortened camps different type of protocols did so they see the really Hamilton Tiger Cats did they see the Hamilton Tiger Cats I don't, I don't, on that drive I don't see any rust in this Hamilton offense they just went five for five 84 yards and a touchdown to Jalen Acklin and what a throw and catch down the rail talk about shaking off rust too the Soli hasn't played in two years he looks great it's fabulous so far what a start they'll go for two Soli again deep to the end zone nobody home that time but a first strike a few strikes Jeremiah Masoli, couple of catches by Ackland. Masoli looks good. Cats look good. How about this touchdown? Welcome back, Canadian Football League fans. It is good to be back. Our quarterback on the panel called this one. There's the newcomer in the secondary, Alfred, and this is the Matchup on the touchdown throw Jalen Acklin just down the sideline and he's just gonna run right by him the coverage pretty good He's in position, but the ball thrown so well from Jeremiah Masoli Just no chance to get there and with Winnipeg dropping the most dominant player as I mentioned in CFL in the last few years Masoli knows he doesn't have the pressure on him on that play takes that extra second and drops a dime in there this ball, the kick drops into Janari and Grant looking for a few blocks on that far side. Pretty good return, nice starting point for Zach Kalaros and the Blue Bombers will try to avenge that. First touchdown of 2021, our first touchdown in a long time in the Canadian Football League goes to Jalen Acklin. Great playoff run for Acklin. That's probably the easiest that great cup. Really sort of emerged in the back half of the season and through the postseason. And well, they look good on offense. That Hamilton start was excellent. No Zach Kolaros. Blitz comes. A crossing pattern for Sheen Bailey. Came to this bomber lineup late last year at the Delaware Valley. Here's the defense that sets up for the Tie Cats. So there's the matchup. Jagger Davis and Hauser off the edges against Stanley Bryant. Jamarcus Hardrick will watch that a little bit in game inside the game. Key on defense for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And the leader of this group is Simone Lawrence. And he is back. Javon Santos Knox, we know about and we'll talk about as the game goes on. Some newcomers in the secondary. Oh, that was a dangerous toss. Siante Evans. Not him. He's new to Hamilton. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> new to Hamilton. Siante Evans almost had his first interception as a cat. But not new to the Canadian Football League. And that's there's a big difference there because you can bring the guys together. This is the intended target in the in the slot position on the outside. And and Siante Evans just reads the mail here. He he comes out of his break coming downhill before the ball is thrown. Maggio the kick to Williams. Cornered right here at the 45 yard line on a 31 yard kick. Jeremiah Masoli back at it when we come back. The season opener in Winnipeg. It has been such a long journey, such a challenge in this pandemic that is still not over, but we are not here tonight. We are not anywhere in Canada without our frontline workers, our nurses, our first responders, our doctors, our true, true heroes. Our scientists, I will add to that as well, that work to come up with this vaccine. And, and absolutely, these are the true heroes. This is why we're getting closer and closer to normal. This is why we're watching Canadian football again and coming together to do so. So on behalf of everyone in the Canadian Football League on behalf of TSN and all of our crews man we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for rushing in and being at the front edge of the hurricane when everybody else was hunkering down at home yeah thank you so much we salute you second and one for Thomas Erlington let's face it sports 
is such a nice reprieve. It's it's nice to have games. We watch the Olympics. With sports has been opening up. We saw it last year when the NBA closed down and the CFL, one of the few leagues that completely shut down their season. Well, it unites us. It's it's really as simple as that. And wear your favorite team colors, and whether you're watching at home or, or right here, and how'd you feel? You're bringing us all together. First and ten again for the Tiger Cats. It's been impressive. Basoli, and that is his first incompletion. Didn't have anybody home, and I think that is second incompletion for Jeremiah Basoli on. That toss also was a dangerous one. Well, Jeremiah Masoli was in a good competition with Dane Evans in the off in the uh, training camp and through the practices. And he talked on a Zoom call with us this week about that competition. And I loved his answer. He said, "Listen, we acknowledged it. We acknowledged that we were in a competition, but we're teammates first, and we're trying to master Tommy Condell's system." That's the goal, and he looks sharp out of the gate, even with that incompletion. Throwing again, second and ten, far side. Not this time. Marcus Tucker is brought down, and also going down is Josh Johnson on that tackle, and he is going to need some assistance from some teammates to bring him to the near sideline. But it will be third down, and the Tiger Cats will have to give the ball away. I don't know about you, but it, I had to take three or four tries at my tie tonight. <laughs> yeah, so haven't put one on in a while. Well, it's not sweatpants. And, <laughs> no, it's. So I got, finally got that right. No running shoes. Well, it feels good. It feels it good feels, to be around these fans and around this game again. It is so great to be back. And that ball caught at the very last moment. Yeah, it's good. 33-yard kick. Blue Bombers trying to get a spark here. Slow out of the gate on their opening night. Myrna Maggie of Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. This is your chance to win big thanks to Save on Food's million dollar touchdown to win if a kickoff is returned for a touchdown. You can win groceries for a year if two kickoffs are returned for a touchdown in this game. You could also win a million bucks. Come on, Myrna. Let's get back to Rod and Glenn. No yards call, 15 yard penalty. Smart play by Noah Hallett for the Blue Bombers, giving them first down near their 30 yard line. Zach Caleros trying to get things cooking here. Swings it out to Charles Nelson, a little stutter step, and they try to rip the ball away from him. Gets about half the first down yardage, maybe a little more here tonight. Get some, a little more success on first down will help get this Winnipeg offense rolling. But clearly missing last year's Grey Cup MVP and outstanding Canadian. Oh, Andrew Harris tonight. Eddie Oliveira in the backfield. Protection this time. Caleros whips one out to the far side for Nick Dembski. And that's a Blue Bomber first down. Just an outstanding season for Andrew Harrison. And again, he won't be out long. They're just being real careful with him, of course. But when you look back at that run in the playoffs and the Great Cup Championship, he really took control of that game. And not only did the Bomber defense, but Andrew Harris, 18 carries, over 100 yards, couple of touchdowns in the championship. First time ever. MOP and outstanding Canadian won by the same player. A couple of touchdowns, a couple of trophies as well. Here's Dembski. They swing it out. Dembski again close to another first down. A little more rhythm now for Kolaros and company. Nine-yard pickup. 
Yeah, and we're all excited to watch Brady Oliveira. And then this is going to be another hometown guy. Hometown hero replaces hometown hero. And I'm not taking anything away from that, but he's got to find his. Winnipeg, number six, 10 yard penalty. Remains first this down. One, this one's coming back. He's just got to find his footing and get settled into the game. His first start, real excited for him and his family. But man, he's he's a player. And he's going to have a great future. He just has to stick with it and learn from the guy who's missing this one tonight. There he is, Andrew Harris. Oliveira and Harris share great lineage, same high schools. So too, Nick Dembski out of Oak Park. Oliveira also fractured his leg two years ago, early in the season. Caleros now with a feint, and now he takes off and look close down the sideline. This is this right here is why Zach Kolaris was the last piece of the puzzle for the Bombers last year and why he is so good at that starting quarterback position when it breaks down his ability to improvise a 49 yarder Dembski does some work at the top end of it question was was he cross the line of scrimmage yeah. he was very close on that throw very very close walk the tightrope 49 yard pickup. Blue Bombers threatening now. 6 0 Cats here. First quarter. Sidearm to Nelson. And he's tackled right there by Channing Scribbling. Our Michigan Wolverine. So it'll be second down now for Winnipeg. Claris, Claris told us on the Zoom call we had this week that the reason he, he was really excited about coming to Winnipeg was their head coach. And he said, you know, listen, with Michael O'Shea as the head coach of this football team, I knew things would be done right. I just wanted to come in and learn and contribute. And what a contribution he made. 4-0 in the regular season, the run in the playoffs, and a championship. After that long, long drought wow. for Bomber fans. Polaris, great protection here all day. Still got time. to that front row. Well, we missed that, didn't we? Yes, we did. They missed it here in Winnipeg. Kenny Lawler, first touchdown for Winnipeg in 2021. A 25-yard strike from Kolaris, and he was wide open behind cover. When the quarterback breaks contain and gets outside, it breaks down your defense. Lawler in behind coverage. Kolaros gets him on track. Again, one of the stories for Winnipeg, Justin Medlock, a future Hall of Fame kicker, not with the Bombers this year, stepped aside from the games. Tyler Krapinia, former rider at Argo last year, and the master marauder, his first kick as a Blue Bomber. The convert is good, and the champs have a one-point lead, thanks to Kolaros, to Lawler. A touchdown strike on night one, the game one, 2021. First quarter opening night, 7-6 Winnipeg to the sideline we go. Here's Sarah Orleski. Brad, you think about how important veterans are in any game, even more so in this season right now when you think about the fact, especially early on, there's no preseason action. So you have a number of players in this game that have never played in the Canadian Football League before or have little experience. One of the key players in the Hamilton Tiger Cats defense remains Simone Lawrence. He's been there since 2013. He continues to set the tone. He feels it's one of his responsibilities as a veteran if you're wondering because he was known for being a talker beforehand that certainly hasn't changed despite the year off and for the Bombers on the defensive side of the ball Adam Big Hill continues to set the tone two-time defensive player of the year Mike O'Shea joked that Adam would even make him look good out there right now in his current athletic state but he said that John Trell Rothmore who's lined up beside Big Hill will have no issues the rookie is in good hands with Big Hill helping lead the way. Biggie does lead the way. Here's Frankie Williams on the kick from Legio, and he 
zigzags his way up to the 37 yard line, a pickup of 22 on the return. Let's go back to the touchdown to Kenny Lawler. He's not going to be in this picture. They put trips into the right side of the field here, but he's not one of them. He's outside, and I'll show you when he gets into the spot. Here we go. Kalaros drops back, and now he's going to buy some time. Stop it here. See, this is the scramble rule. Lawler on the crosser. As soon as he scrambles, he turns it up, and that turns the secondary around. They start chasing, and he's in behind coverage. And did you see that? stuff going on early on here tonight. I will tell you one thing, Suits, is the sloppiness or maybe a scrambly type of so-called preseason game that some might have anticipated doesn't look like it, does it? No, it doesn't. And, you know, one of the reasons for that is that in a preseason game, there are a ton of rookies playing. A lot of players. Yeah, you're, you're just you're throwing a lot of the new guys all out there together, and then it can become a little bit sloppy. These are, these are veteran star players that are have looked sharp right out of the game and there's a little angst from that visiting team still with a bitter taste of what happened yeah, 620 sir. days ago Masoli loads of time crossing pattern again for Acklin right in front of the first down marker some questions we talk about Okafor at one tackle Tate at the other he's a newcomer as well and that was great protection up front let's just take a look at that offensive line just Sean Thomas Erlington picking up his men great pick up there on the outside on the linebacker and gives Masoli tons of time to sit in that pocket and throw a strike to the outside Hamilton third and a long one deciding not to go for it so they will kick it away it's a good sign though for for Hamilton's offense because that was a matchup I was really going to hone in on Jackson Jeffcoat and Jefferson against the tackle new punter Joel Whitford for Hamilton from Australia 48 yard kick Grant makes one miss and then is brought down near the 30 yard line with a minute 28 to go in this opening quarter we've had some Lightning already here tonight from Caleros and Masoli, both operating at a high efficiency. Let's remind Bomber fans of just what he brought to the table when he showed up in Winnipeg. Of course, you look at the bottom there. He went 4-0, and so did not lose a game in the regular season. He gets in there. Darvin Adams, you see a little bit of those improvisation skills as he can make things happen when the protection breaks down a little bit when he's on the run and moving around with his eyes downfield. We've seen an example of that again here tonight. Darvin Adams not in the lineup. That's one of the missing pieces for the Blue Bombers. Both of these teams missing some key components early in the season. It's Mike O'Shea who told us also in our Zoom call earlier this week that he would be a puddle and <laughs> full of emotion. He said, it's the Irish in me. I'm just going to, I don't care. I'm going to let it rip, he said. And I'm sure there was a lot of emotion on that sideline tonight. There was, and there was up here too. I can guarantee yeah. you I was trying to keep it together, but he, he's he's in game form he, now. He's back. He, he, was he's in, back. Yeah, he was in the ear of the official right there. There was an unnecessary roughness call oh, nice. on that kick return. That puts the Bombers back in a hole, and wow. Oliveira also wow. brought down in the backfield. So this field is suddenly much longer for this Blue Bomber offense. So we creep inside the last minute of this opening quarter on opening night. Renzo Malden just he was in the back. It's like almost in their huddle. Yeah. Malden out of Louisville. Former Jets draft pick. National Football League. So second and 13. Laros is sending them all out. And he'll roll and look and now comes back and there's that improvisation look at him go here dancing now and running and sprinting nobody there now finds a receiver but it's incomplete as Dempsey <laughs> he, he was running all over that looked like an Olympic 
400 meter race there for Zach Caleros. Well, and Cam Kelly, newcomer in the Hamilton linebacking core, is one of those tweener type players who has to come all the way back. Now, keep in mind, as Kolaris is doing this, the secondary and coverage people are chasing all over the field trying to find guys. It's like a scramble drill back there. So he gets outside, and now Dembski's coming back, and Cam Kelly cuts underneath it. Frankie Williams is that on the fly on the kick from Leggio. Great field position for the final play of the opening quarter barring penalty for the Soli and the Cats. Well, tomorrow night, CFL on TSN. First Friday night football suits presented by the Brick, Lions, and the Rough Riders. 8 Eastern, 9 Eastern rather, 6 Pacific, only on TSN tomorrow night. Great matchups. Just great to have football back north of the border. Sellout tonight. It'll be a sellout tomorrow night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Six seconds left here in this opening frame. So... High wire offense already and a couple of quarterbacks getting some protection and getting out on the run too. Big man Willie Jefferson. Solely turns and hands to Thomas Erlington and Willie Jefferson was right there. That's the first quarter on opening night. Good quarter for both teams. Cats strike first, Bombers strike back. The convert separates these two teams. Commissioner Randy Ambrosi is here in Winnipeg. He will join us when we come back on opening night of the brand new CFL season. CFL season off to a flying start. Here are the numbers. Both quarter, quarterbacks putting up some good numbers through the air. The Bombers lead 7-6 here at IG Field in the Manitoba capital. So happy to have the commissioner of the Canadian Football League, Randy Ambrosi, here. So nice to see you. I think it's we're all so nice to see everybody, but um, needless to say, you must feel like it's New Year's Day here today. Oh, it's a lot of holidays rolled into one. You know, I woke up this morning, just went, oh, my goodness, this is what we've been hoping for and wanting for a long time. And so happy for the players. Look, this building is just rocking tonight. The fans are just thrilled. I was here early. You know, they were standing outside. They just wanted to be get into the building and watch them some CFL. And how exciting is that? And to see the two of you, you're, you, you know, you're just as good looking as I remember <laughs> the last time we were together. So, so that's good. So, Randy, your eyesight's <laughs> gone on you in the last 620 days. Stay with us, Kamish. As Masoli goes back to work over the top. And close to a first down. Randy, everyone that I've talked to, the players, the coaches, Michael O'Shea, all of them, they're all saying the same thing, and I feel it too. This feels like more than just a football game. As important as it is for all of football in our country, more than just a football game. Yeah, I, 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 Glenn, I feel the same way. I, I've been feeling that way for a while. It's like we... It's like, in a way, we've elevated our identity. That we are an important part of this country, and this feels important tonight. It's going to feel important all season. And, you know, in Hamilton in December, it's going to, again, be a way to have a national celebration that we together, you know, have come through this crisis. Brandon Banks with that last reception. Second down, seven-yard pickup. Soli. Swinging it out again, Brandon Banks will pick up the first down. You know, your job came with a lot of descriptions when you took over, dealing with players, uh, contracts, uh, the league, uh, hoisting the Grey Cup. There never was something about a pandemic. What, how challenging has that been for you and the league office over the last year? Yeah, you know, it, it has been. I'd, I'd be, you know, it'd be disingenuous to suggest that it's been, uh, you know, it's been fun. At, at times it wasn't fun at all. But, you know, I've, I've been surrounded, we've been surrounded by really great people. You know, Wade Miller here in Winnipeg is just, a, you know, example of one of our presidents. As all, they all do work so hard. After the play was over and the first down had been made, objectionable conduct, Hamilton number 16. We go back 10, but we are first down. Glenn and I never got objectionable conduct penalty, <laughs> so we don't understand that particular 
Uh, but you know, it, it, it's been tough, but we've had really, really great people here uh, that, are, that work together, a great league office team. And frankly, our governor's in here, now we're back, and it's, uh, it's, it was worth the struggle to get to here tonight. So talk about some of these new protocols, because you, you just sort of in the week, just leading up to game one here, talked about the vaccinations and how have the clubs been with the protocols and they've been, been Glenn, Glenn, they've been great uh, they understand them they're they're committed to them they all know that we've got to keep COVID out of the locker rooms yeah. right they just know that that's the whole that's the whole game this year is keep COVID out of the locker rooms I think everyone is working together they've been uh, they've been really good at following the protocols and uh, we're going to try to where we can adjust them to make them a little friendlier, we'll do that. But our commitment is December 12th, Great Cup in Hamilton, all nine teams having played all 14 games. It'll be a second and short yardage here. Commissioner Randy Ambrosi, opening night, joining us here in Winnipeg. Soli loads of time again, sending everybody deep and will take it himself, tucks it close to a first down. You hear the roar of the fans. That's what we all wanted to hear. How difficult was it? How important was it to put people in seats to get this season going? Well, it is It is our league. I mean, we've been saying it, uh, you know, throughout the crisis. We're, uh, you know, we're a bums in the seats league. We're a fans league. It's going to be almost impossible for us. It was impossible for us to play without fans. But, you know, tonight to be here to see this, you realize why this isn't just an, an economic issue, but it's part of our game. It's part of who we are, the fans. This is the, the fans really own this league. Um, and, and to have them here tonight and excited, and you, you know, you're, I know tomorrow in Saskatchewan, a sold-out uh, stadium, Calgary and Edmonton, I think it's just going to validate everything. Well, you know, Randy, I think this is not the time to do a complete forensics analysis on the offseason and some of the discussions that went on. I'm all, and I've said the whole time that I, you know, I think it's always great to talk to other leagues, talk to other entertainment entities. But can we agree that leaning into what makes our game great, three downs, 12 players, Canadian content, we can all lean into that and celebrate said this uh, several months ago longer wider faster longer wider faster is what makes our game so special and I think that's what I really believe in this league is you watch this game so far it's exciting that longer field that wider field that faster field is what makes the CFL so great when I, I believe that's the enduring element that we need to make sure is always part of our CFL they're gonna likely measure this longer wider faster and were the cats shorter on this Soli just really had to advance forward and oh, he is right they at the marker. Are, yeah they're gonna bring the sticks out here you mentioned about Adam Big Hill he hasn't hit anybody in a long yeah. time, so he's he's got a lot of pent-up energy that he's throwing into that pile. Looks like they've got it. They have. Now first one of those sort of risky calls, I'll say, although it's in plus territory for Coach o, Coach o to make to go for it. But he gets a new set and a big run by Jeremiah Masoli. CFL Coach of the Year back in 2019. He'll be an inductee into the Canadian Football Hall of Fame later this year as well. Joining his buddy on this sideline, Michael Shea. He's there already. Oh, it's hey, there it is. Big Willie. And the first interception of 2021 goes to Willie Jefferson. Commissioner, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, guys. Welcome back. Yeah, it's great to be here. Guys, thank let's you, have sir. a great season. You too. Thank you. you. Willie Jefferson with the pick. Masoli into those big arms. And the Bombers have the football.
versatility from Willie Jefferson off the edge. He does three things here. He gets pressure up the field on Jeremiah Masoli. He gets contained so he can't escape on the outside. He plants his feet, and this is not a call drop for Willie Jefferson. He's just playing ball once the play is snapped, and the ball is snapped, and he just drops underneath. Hey, man, mama, I love you. Daddy, Holly Kelly B. Can't wait for y'all to get up here, man. It's all love. Texas native, and look what he did last, I want to say last year, last season, which was a year and a half ago. Look at the knockdowns, sacks, not known for a lot of picks, but he can do it all. Well, he and Jackson Jeffco took over the Great Cup. I mean, they really did. Right. And then on offense, it was Andrew Harris, but I mean, Willie Jefferson, three sacks in the Cup, yeah, strip man, fumbles, I mean, made it really, really tough on Dane Evans. Mike, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers were sizing for rings in November in 2019. And I asked Michael Shea about Jefferson. I said, you were a dominant defensive player too. He said, the variety of plays that he can make is clearly amazing. Play there. <laughs> but, but he, you know, he was talking about Willie and said, listen, I, there's a lot of dominant players. You know, there's dominant pass rushers, dominant linebackers. But when you talk about the variety of plays that Willie Jefferson can make, there's nobody else that, that can play that kind of ball. And he's a great character. Oh, yeah. one, of the, one of the most lovable guys you will meet in sports. So Brady Oliveira is starting to put his stamp on this game. And the touches. First down. Picks up a few. Is Oliveira again when his career began the North Dakota product a couple of seasons ago was derailed early on by injury and was lost in the Bombers home opener the focus there listening into Calaris what a great shot from our crew here in Winnipeg throwing down second and seven Nelson and that was right into traffic knocked away so the Bombers will kick it away nine minutes to go before halftime Janet Stribling the newcomer in the secondary for ha for Hamilton he was the guy that was turned around on that first Lawler touchdown on the crossing route I don't know that it was his man but he was certainly trying to turn and make a play but as this game's gone on the young guys will start to figure it out and figure out the pace and start to make plays of their own. Here's the kick from Woodbridge Ontario's Mark Legio the Western Mustang and will get a couple of nice bounces for Winnipeg 48 yard kick for the newcomer. Smoke still in the air from the wildfires sun setting but what a night in Winnipeg. Our CFL on TSN season is dedicated to two of our teammates that we lost over this last year. Longtime producer Tony Darchi and of course the big man Chris Schultz gone way too soon. Great great friends great teammates great people will never be forgotten and we dedicate this season in their memory. Well, Darchi and Solchi one behind the camera one in front of it. Starts one of our producers. Everybody knows Chris Schultz and the love that both and passion that both had for the Canadian Football League. And we miss them both so dearly. And you mentioned and you said it right. It, you know, two great teammates. And you know, I, I got to know Schultz even better, not just as a colleague, but as a, as a friend. When we were doing a show that covered NFL Europe in the offseason of the Canadian Football League together in Toronto. And I can tell you that the man's passion for Canadian football, he would not handle anyone that devalued our game. And I will continue that fight in his memory. What a great catch that was down Whoa. the sideline. Jalen Acklin is putting on a show here tonight. On a pump and go, and Acklin 
reaches for the sky and comes down with the football. Great we're dedicating the season. What a catch and throw and this could be the start of a great matchup. Masoli 28 yarder nice catch gaining trust by every time he makes a catch like that with his wide receiver already 90 yards and receiving in the ball game. Masoli back at work hard peg to that right side and Sean Thomas Erlington takes over the backfield this year for the Cats, a five yard gain. The guy who had time to heal, you know, the benefits for him for a season that was shut down last year. Mike Masoli, both he and Masoli got healthier. Masoli up the gun. Just tripped up. He sails shoestring tackle. Another close one here and, and possible decision for Coach O. Well, they have taken it back now a yard and a half, so looks like it'll be about two, maybe even three. Team that was perfect on third down plays back in 2019, the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Well, there wasn't many silver linings as you mentioned through the canceled season, but you know, one of them was the fact that guys that were hurt in 19 and playing injured, like Sean Thomas Erlington and Jeremiah Masoli, that were trying to rehab injuries, they had lots of time to do it, and they've got fresh legs. Whitford. Quickly down is Janarian Grant. When we come back, we'll talk about the local kid. Brady Oliveira, Sarah Oleski has a report on opening night in the Canadian Football League 2021. Brady Oliveira makes his debut as a starting back tonight from North Dakota, but really the hometown kid of Oak Park High School. What a story. Here's Sarah. Well, Rod, you know, you mentioned it, Oak Park High School, the local product, so you know how much tonight means for him, not only starting in a CFL game, but here in front of friends and family. In 2019, his first season, it was just the second game of the season, the home opener, when he broke his leg and was done for the season. Now, he knows that Andrew Harris isn't going to be out for long. He's obviously the face of the franchise, but Brady's looking to take advantage of the opportunity in front of him. He feels he's mentally making the biggest progression compared to what we saw last season. Now, he said the offensive line has really helped him out a lot because he's been taking so many first-team reps during training camp with Harris sideline for almost all of it. He feels as if he's very comfortable in this, and offensive coordinator Buck Pierce notices an improvement every day. He says he's becoming more vocal. You can't replace Andrew Harris, but Brady's looking to make an impact here tonight. Pretty exciting night for the family. Yes. Hump Shanny up there. Proud of Brady. And those numbers off the chart <laughs> that you just threw to Sarah. Like that, wow. that graphic. Shredded that league. Yes. Won a championship. Coming to the near sideline. It's another Oak Park Raider. What a program. Nick Dembski, Andrew Harris, right. Brady Oliveira playing high school football. You know, it's that, there's another thing that we've lost over the last year is kids getting a chance to play from a very young age in high school ball and college ball and it's so great to see everybody back getting a chance to play again. You know kind of what I mentioned to the commissioner that one of the things that makes this game great you know that Brady throughout the break in the canceled season works with youth at risk and there he is up the middle for a nice curve. He works with youth, youth at risk proud of his community and now getting a chance to play and given the opportunity to understand the game at the next level, which he's at now, it'll take a little bit of time, but when he gets there, this is going to be a play. He's doing tonight, and he's getting, he's getting into it now. He's, 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 he, is, he is finding his footing, settling in. This may come back, though. It looks like it might be offside against the Bombers, but... But listen, there's three things that make Holding. this game great. Winnipeg, number 51. Ten-yard penalty remains second down. Three things that make this game great. Three downs, 12 players, Canadian content. Inclusivity. 
half of our rosters are Americans for the most part, some international players, and then we have our Canadian talent. And for this year and beyond, they are Canadians to me, no matter what designation is written in any book you read. And it has been the Canadian Football League. A century now. Life of the league. These local players like this guy who could go. become heroes and have nights like he might be having oh, tonight. Hey, oh, yeah. Brady Oliveira starting to heat up here. 21-yard pickup. Oh, and his Canadian head coach, first one over there to celebrate with him on this really nice Dump pass, he picks up a lot of yards on his own and breaks the tackle of Simone Lawrence. And Simone Lawrence knows a thing or two about tackling. Tony Lawler doing a good job trying to keep Simone at bay. It said Simone's name very much tonight. Go on. All night, that's for sure. He had a career night here. Record-breaking night. Oh, look at Kolaros now. Scrambling and gets out of the pocket. Still on his feet. And a little low that time. That would have been a play like last year against Calgary. Rasheed Bailey couldn't scoop that with one hand. Zach Kolaros doing some dancing out there. Well, yeah, and he, you know, he doesn't just break the, the containment and then roll out or he doesn't just throw on the run. This guy is like a jitterbug in how he improvises and makes things up. I mean, it's impossible for a D lineman to predict how he's going to try and escape. Did a lot of training in the Southern Ontario area in the last few months. To the hockey training facility. There's Kolaris, the rush on. Has some running room, but he lobs it over the top. Another completion for Lawler. Three minutes to go before halftime. Zach would like to get one more play in before the warning. I think he's trying to get them huddled up quickly here, get them on. Break the huddle, but there it is again. Interesting on the Zoom call, he told us that well, they are calling the three minute warning. We'll come back. Yeah, we'll come hold back. that. Hold, we'll that. hold that thought. Good story. Zach Kolaros, three minute warning before halftime. A one point ball game in Winnipeg. Man, these shots are something else tonight. So great to have football back north of the border. Kate Burness, the boys coming up at halftime. Three minutes away. Zach Kolaros, who's been working in that hockey facility, RIT training over the last few months, and a lot of those plays were exactly what we just saw in that last play. Well, it's interesting when he told us how he would improvise because all the gyms were closed down. I mean, guys couldn't train the way they normally train, even if they had a little more time to do it. So he improvised throwing to some hockey players that were in that facility. He said he threw to empty soccer nets in the corners. Some NHL players, some junior players. Now, hockey players have to catch good. with your mitts. Well, yeah, the hockey you got to take the gloves off. But <laughs> But, you know, they, they've got good hands. Yeah. Hockey players have good hands now, so it's not, not a bad idea. But interesting to hear the stories of how the players, and, and listen. They, Adapted. Yeah, and listen, they've gone through, they've gone through some tough times, as we all have, and as a lot of people around the world have with this pandemic. But missing a whole season and all those paychecks when you put food on the table with your livelihood being football. Polaros. So pressure is again. There he tucks it now and he takes off and Jack Kolaros slides down near the 30-yard line and beyond. And good recognition. The threshold, the pocket collapsed and Kolaros took off. It's it's amazing to, you know, it's just the small subtle steps, the, the little hop up into the pocket. And when we talk about managing the pocket, that's what we mean. That that little hop helps his tackles because the tackles can run defensive ends beyond him. He gets a little lane up the middle and 18 yards to keep the drive alive. Another two minutes before the half. 
the Hamilton 30. Rivera in the backfield. Another handoff. He's nowhere to go this time. Change in Winnipeg, too, of course. Offensive coordinator Paul Apolis is now head coach in Ottawa. Buck Pierce has become the offensive coordinator. Which has really worked out well. I mean, Buck was here with Paul Lapolis as well. So this isn't a new coach coming from a different team. And he's, you know, when I talked to Zach about how that's working out and how that relationship has developed, and he's, he can't be happier. He just thinks that Buck is such a great communicator. And that's a former quarterback now, Gordon. Going in zone. Lawler again. Blitz picked up in the middle by Drew Wolitarski, and that gives Zach Kalaros just enough time to get it to Lawler, his second on the night, and that's a veteran. Third year, Jamal Wool on the wide corner that Lawler fights and wins the fight for the ball. 11 play, 94 yard drive. Bombers who've got up to a bit of a sputtering start here. Down 6 0 and have scored 14 a straight. Another convert from Tyler Grapinia. You know, we shouldn't be surprised because they've been doing it their whole lives. This is this is what these guys do. They play football. And I I just Noticing the trust, the trust that quarterbacks have with their wideouts, with their receivers. It's like midseason where real good coverage from Jamal Roll is just ignored basically by Zach Kalaros. He throws it up, he trusts his receiver to win the battle, and Kenny Lawler delivers for number eight. So a minute 19 for Jeremiah Masoli to answer for the half. Winnipeg offense picking it up. Last time we were in a CFL stadium was in Calgary back in 2019, and these two teams battled. Winnipeg came in as the underdog after that 15 and 3 Hamilton season. Bombers went on some kind of roll in November, led by Zach Kalaros and Andrew Harris captured the Grey Cup. Failed their banner here tonight. You see it in the background. Frankie Williams picks his way to the 40. So it'll be some quick hitters here, some up tempo now for Masoli trying to get this in scoring position. Okay, look, no preseason. Look at this is Daly, the safety, coming through on the safety blitz on that touchdown. And Wolitarski from the right of your screen, the receiver. Th this is game one, first half, and he is on top of his assignments to make that key block to give Zach just enough time to get it out of there. Sean Thomas Erlington is drilled, and Biggie has an impact. What did Michael Shea say? Well, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think there's a greater compliment a player can get from his head coach than his coach saying that Adam Big Hill inspires me every day. How he manages his time and how he maintains his focus every day inspires me. Pros, pro. Adam Big Hill, two times. Outstanding defensive player. Masoli waits. Nowhere to go now. Masoli has to improvise. And he better go down. He does. And the Blue Bombers are going to get the ball back. Of all things, just when Hamilton thought they could drive. 
cut into the lead. The Bombers might be able to extend it here. You know, we've seen a couple of runs now, though, from Jeremiah Masoli, and that's a good sign. Again, you know, I always wonder about lingering knees, and he had a bad one. But he's made a couple of runs like that, and he is not even thinking about that knee. No brace on it, he's good to go. Janarian Grant slides left side. 30 seconds remain. Lead by eight. Zach Larson, a guy who began his career in Toronto with the Argonauts as a backup. Went to Hamilton, became the starter and the star. He's run into injury problems through the years. Saskatchewan, then that trade to Toronto again, where he didn't play, and then the trade of all trades to Winnipeg at the deadline. Help the Blue Bombers win the Grey Cup. Keep it on the ground. Oliveira breaks a tackle. Bucket down, close to a first down. Thirty-five yards rushing for the local product. Laros, twenty-five to go. Second and one. Close to that one. They get the first down. They take a shot. Opening night. Why not? Where do you take the knee and get ready for the second half? It's Michael Shea a little time to think about what they might do in 20 seconds with chains coming out to measure. Kind of a life changing time as well for Zach Kolaris over this shutdown period. He became a new dad as well. Sure. Sierra. Hey. I asked Coach O'Shea, what can you tell me about Zach that we can't see? When you go to work every day and you're in that environment, he says his calm demeanor and leadership skills through the process, like I've never seen. Great humility, but understanding that you got to stay calm when the bullets are flying. Bullets are flying. Get out of bounds, Drew Wolitarski. He does. And maybe time for one more play to get you into field goal position. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And add three. You don't have to take a shot here. You can if you get the right look, but you don't have to take a shot. Intermediate throw gets you into field goal range. 13 yard gain. Pena's got a good leg in his first game as a Blue Bomber. Again, Justin Medlock now. Lock ticks. Lara sideline once more. She Bailey. Seven, maybe a quick hitter again. Do you run one more play? Maybe have a time for that, just that one extra shot, get it closer for Krapinia. There he is. Yeah, I, you know, I, asking you to go out and kick a, this this long on your first kick. Well, his career long is 53. This would be about a 51, 52 yarder, so. Quick out. Quick one. In a hurry. They do, but Mahler incomplete. So three seconds remain. Time remains. Work the sideline, and now, yeah, now you see if you're if you're going to give it a shot. Is it within the range? This is usually where your kicker will go to the head coach, and he'll tell him. I'm good to go. Keep in mind, Grapinia was with Montreal. Traded from Toronto, came late to camp for the Blue Bombers. Mark Leggio was the kicker. And they brought Crepinia in to help with the field goals. There's Leggio in the back, who's the hunter. So, with three seconds, shot is to take it to the end zone. Caleros, spin. And he's going to have to hurl one soon. Look out now, he's going down. Enough dancing. 
says Jagera Davis. Big, big, big. Polaris is sacked. The Bombers. Kenny Lawler, two touchdowns. Lead 14 6 at the half. Let's send it to Kate Burness and the guys in the studio. CFL on TSN at the half. All right, thank you very much. What you're made of and how bad you are When the stakes are high and the lights are on you And the weight of the words on your back Do you dig your boots on you? I do not want to be here I'm going to press her in for the town Built strong enough to hold the line Back and down, I'll find it now What you're made of Back at a full house at IG Field, 14 to 6, Winnipeg over Hamilton. The guy who got it started for the Cats, Jalen Acklins with Sarah Orleski. Jalen, what is it that stood out to you most about that first half of being back? Uh, we didn't. Uh, nothing stood out besides us not executing. We got to execute better on offense, and we got to get consistent drives going. When you look at the early production that you seem to have in chemistry going with Jeremiah, what does that give you as maybe a starting point to be able to build on for this season? Yeah, I mean, whenever you have a quarterback like Jeremiah, like personality-wise, it makes it that much easier in the huddle. And, uh, you know, him and Dane both have good – I have a good connection with them, so it, it'll be fine throughout the season. We just got to get things rolling on offense. Thanks for the time. Yeah, no Bombers will kick it off with an eight-point lead. Big turning point as well, that interception by Willie Jefferson when Hamilton was driving, and the Cats will get the ball first. Frankie Williams throws his shoulder, but is then thrown down. So Jeremiah Masoli back at it. Great start in his opening drive, and then again that one pick by Jefferson really was the difference in the first half. Yeah, I thought he looked real sharp coming out of the gate. That first drive was great. There's Acklin down the sideline had a touchdown in that first quarter and and then the pick from Willie Jefferson team seemed to take and push that Hamilton offense off track a little bit Let's see what adjustments they have made for the second half Soli with Thomas Erlington little play action Soli slings it just like he did starts it off with Brandon Banks S slow to get up but like there was a penalty as well here. This will Offside. be negated. Hamilton, number 16. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Mike Jones on the tackle offside. And again, Brandon Banks kind of grimacing after that hit by Jones. He was quite animated at the end of that first half, up and down the sideline a little bit. I'm sure he's calmed down from then, and I'm sure Coach always helped him do that. But he was a little bit ahead of the snap right there. Takes that play right off the board. First and 15. Masoli avoids one. Here come the Bombers. Masoli's going to have to step out of bounds. There was no one downfield. No targets available for Jeremiah that time. He wanted a corner route to Marcus Tucker, and it's to the left of your screen. You probably don't see Tucker in this look. He has it, but because of that flash pressure off the edge at the top, he pulls the ball down and can't release it to Tucker on the corner, and that's where he gets in trouble, and Big Hill runs him up down. Big second down play. Tucker was slow to get back to the sideline. He was over here where he ran that core route. And Masoli looks in the huddle and says, wait a minute, this isn't quite right. So he goes over to coach and says, let's regroup, re call the play again, reset. Thirty year old from San Francisco, California. Oregon Duck, longtime cat. Masoli delivers far side. 
Jalen Marshall ran into a couple of bodies. And it will be about a yard. Not even that. It looks like, you know, they will move those sticks. It is a first down for Marshall. Four receivers set to the wide side of the field, and they're moving Brandon Banks around. There's Banks in the in the middle. He's not the target here. Marshall is, but they're going to move him around. We saw him on the last play at that wideout spot because his presence draws coverage. Good second effort from Jalen Marshall. Ohio State Buckeye. Sean Thomas Erlington nowhere to roam. Jake Thomas in the middle. Makes the play, the longest tenured Winnipeg Blue Bomber. And one of the most underrated players on this team and, and in the in the league. I mean, th this guy is a playmaker respected by every single one of his teammates and the coaching staff. And, you know, he's one of those players, you know when we have our meetings and now they're on Zoom, he's one of those players where we haven't asked about him, but the coach brings him up anyway. Every time. Eric Tom Boy played his college ball at Acadia. Asoli again. Looking, looking, tossing. And Acklin there again. Not this time, though. And on the corner, it's D. Alford. Closes it out in coverage. See, now, now the young guys, now the new guys. Sometimes they're not that young, but D. Alford is. He's, he's, he's 23 years old. Remember, he got beat in the first half, but he comes back in. He says, now, okay, everybody, no matter who you are and how long you played, that happens to everybody. If you've crossed the stripe, you've had a receiver in behind you as a DB, but he's adjusted, settling in, and a nice play downfield. The eighth overall pick in the CFL Global Draft. Joel Whitford, Hunter. And his college ball in Washington out of Australia, flag down. Charles Nelson down to another flag after the play will sort out those calls high above IG Field south of the downtown core in Winnipeg. A great night for football. Trying to conquer COVID has been a team game even for the teams. Zach Caleros, his sister. Lanai, his brother-in-law, Adam, first responders. We've talked to a lot of the players about family members who've been at front lines coach Daryl the defensive line Daryl Patterson that's his sister Glenda for Hamilton Jalen Marshall's mom Angel and her dad his dad Richard both medical professionals and Marcus Tucker's aunt Lawanda and again you know we're not playing tonight without you you're at the front line putting your lives on the line to save ours and we really appreciate all the first responders and the healthcare workers in our country and around the world have done this. Everybody knows somebody. Yes, indeed. Everybody's been affected. We all are. All in it together. A lot of it together. A lot of penalties there. Piling on penalty. You can see where, when we went to break, Charles Nelson was down by the 20-yard line. You can see where the bombers scrimmage, so penalties piling up. The piling on not helping. Zach Caleros back in his office here with an eight-point advantage. Well, we had we had the one when the commissioner was up with Brandon Banks. That's the piling on right there. That added 15. But, you know, for the most part, I, the officials have done a good job. They're They're trying to get back and back in the swing of things. Polaris wants to launch near side. And Kenny Lawler looked like there might have been a tug on that jersey just before that ball reached there from Jamal Roll. I think Dembski flag on the far side. Yeah, I, I think I think Nick Dembski is a little ahead of the snap there. Nick, Nick, Nick Dembski had a great Offside, count. Winnipeg, number 10, penalty decline, third down. By, by all accounts. Just need that all, a little bit quicker, guys. And all reports, 
you know great camp for Nick Dembski building on an outstanding season in 19 and you know what I when I think about Nick Dembski and you talk about veterans and Dembski's been around now this is year six for him in the Canadian Football League you you hear about the vet days every camp the vets have vet days vet days are when you know you're a little banged up you're a little tight and sore so you take a day off well that's not a good check penalty flag down there's a scrap behind the play a little melee that comes to nothing Cameron Kelly is jostling there okay. right nothing here right no vet days for Dembski no no <laughs> no indeed Bombers leading guess who's always around the ball Willie Jefferson one of the most dominant this league has ever seen well we go back almost two years Willie Jefferson put on a show in Calgary at the Grey Cup one of the great defensive performances in Grey Cup history and just not blockable in, in a game where Hamilton went in as the favorites were all with all their weapons and how well Dean Evans had been playing leading up to that big championship game and wow Willie Jefferson just shut the door there were two penalties on that including the ball that went out of bounds so it's a re-kick better kick from Leggio there it looks like no yards. fumbled football Hamilton back on top of it but the flags would likely signal a no yards call good kick that time from Leggio and always downfield quickly getting closer to the all time record for special teams tackles is that special teams demon Mike Miller. Well let's take a look at at him in his office and his office is special teams cover teams. Not the glory returner guys. This is this is the heart and soul guys. This is the get down the field, fight through it, cause a fumble, get after it, don't stop till you hear the whistle. One of the best special teams players in the last couple of years when it came to covering kicks. Mike Miller is not missing a beat. Here's Al Bradbury again. Illegal block. Hamilton, number 28, 10 yard penalty. So it's an First illegal down. block, not in no yards, and penalties starting to hurt the Cats here in this third quarter. Miller, by the way, 185 career special teams tackles, five away from the all time record set by Jason Iraq. He does not have one tonight. Long field for the Cats. Soli's going to change his play. This crowd is loud here. Trouble again for Masoli. Nobody there. Bomber defense is amping it up with that crowd. Yeah, they are. You know, we, we showed you Willie Jefferson and his great cut. Jackson Jeff Cohen up the other side. He, he he had two sacks in the Great Cup game. So as they tried to make adjustments, Hamilton to try and slow down Jefferson, that put Jeff Cohen, a guy who's grown up with the game, in a one on one on his man and he did some damage. Those are two mighty bookends. Jeff Cohen and Jefferson. Here they come. Look out. Ball is down. There's no whistle. The Bombers look like an incomplete pass. That is not a fumble. Uh, maybe we just missed the whistle in the din of the crowd here. Well, it looked like the arm was moving forward from Jeremiah Masoli, which would mean it's incomplete pass at bounds. So let's take a look. Was it a fumble? Uh, I think it, it, it's no question his arm's going forward when the ball is released. Combo ends up getting there. Jeff Coat, the top of your screen. Combo on the stunt coming underneath with Jefferson wrapping around outside, and this time it's Congo that goes home, gets home. Whitford from his goal line. Nice kick here for Nelson. Good field position for the Blue Bombers after a 45 yard kick. And great D again from the Big Blue. Well, MLS on TSN continues Saturday as Toronto FC. Hosts NYCFC at BMO Field. Coverage gets underway. 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. 
on TSN. Look forward to some soccer tomorrow. Canada and Sweden. A gold medal in women's soccer. And Saskatchewan, BC tomorrow night. <laughs> yes, sir. It's going to be a big day in sports tomorrow. Well, this Hamilton defense, if you, if you need a play, you look to Jagarit Davis. If you need a play, you look to Simone Lawrence. You look to your veterans to step up and, and try to change momentum because the special teams play by Miller and a penalty tacked on two plays on defense and the Bombers moving in to score. Mark Washington needs a play from one of those veterans. Second and five. Laros goes deep again. Jump ball caught or is it no? Incomplete again. Kenny Lawler almost had the hat trick. But Frankie Williams the core of the veteran and the returner plays this outstanding back to the fundamentals. Well, look at the trash talk. Go ahead. Yeah, that's okay. We got that back. I like seeing that back. But what a play. I mean, keep composed. The guy scored twice already in this game tonight. You're running with him down the sideline. You could see in his eyes that the ball is about to arrive. Played with discipline, didn't interfere, knocked it out of there. They needed a play, and they got one from Frankie Williams. A little anger, a little hostility. Oh, almost blocked, and it's out of bounds. Jagera Davis did well to stay off the kicker. 29-yard kick. They will pin the Cats here in Winnipeg tonight. Some opening night casualties already. Sarah Oleski with more. Yeah, Rod, we had four in the first half, three for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Linebacker Josh Johnson done for the night. So Brandon Alexander, the safety, will take his spot. Noah Hallett, the rookie, will now move in as safety. Janarian Grant, returner, done for the game. Charles Nelson now returning. And then you look on the Hamilton Tiger Cats side. Defensive end Lorenzo Malden also will not return. Well, already some injuries on game one. Again, long field for Hamilton. First and ten inside their ten. A cluster formation. Trying to swing it out. No go for Brandon Banks. And the Bombers scooping the ball up, but it was a forward pass. It was not a lateral. And Banks is very frustrated and has been frustrated since that opening drive really tonight. Well, you know, I, I thought he, he started the game real well and then you know that penalty he got now we had the commissioner at the time so we really didn't get into it where he got the the, the penalty 15 yarder for throwing the ball he was throwing it to the, to official, the official and, and the, it was the other guy in the hand it was a complete mistake and, and since then he's been very animated and up and down and excited and talking and frustrated Masoli has to shake one and throws again for Ackland who can't stretch out Jalen Acklin seems to be the only weapon right now for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And another two and out. And once again, pressure on their punter, Joel Whitford, who's going to have to kick out of the end zone. Third straight, two and out. Just one completion so far in the second half for Hamilton. Sometimes it's because you're just not executing, but sometimes it's because the defense has decided They've made some adjustments and are getting pressure, and that's really what's happening. Well, they will take the knee, give up two this time. Sixteen to six, the score, ten-point game. Lots of time left. Just seems that the Bomber defense has really asserted itself after giving that opening drive touchdown up to Jalen Acklin. And there's the leadership. Just a, a small example. Everything matters. And when Zach Kalaros goes over and says, hey, to Willie Jefferson, gives him a little high five there and says, you know what? You're, you're, you're giving us a chance here to take a, a jump and, and to pick it up. Because, you know, the great opening drive by the Hamilton offense, and they looked like they were in sync. But then the defense made some adjustments. Then Willie Jefferson got going. Then he got jo jo Jackson Jeffcoat going. Willie Jefferson with that pick. That frustrated Brandon Banks. The pressure on Jeremiah Masoli 
hasn't forced a whole lot of massive mistakes from the veteran quarterback, but Richie Hall's group has turned it up a notch in this third quarter. Yeah, have they ever? Cats have been held off the board. You can see Brandon Banks just. Yeah, he's smoldering. I mean, he yeah, just he shaking is shaking his head. Jeremiah Masoli, the first drive, threw for 84 yards. Since that time, he's only thrown for 83 yards. They haven't scored since that first drive. Completely different cat team, completely different bomber team. Here's Nelson again taking over from Grant. Bombers will set up shop near the 40 yard line. So now the veteran QB in, in Caleros, he knows that this is the opportunity to sort of put your, your foot on the gas pedal and come away this drive with points. And, and that snowball may roll downhill in a big way. So again, you, you, if you're Jeremiah Masoli right now, you're, you're looking at your defense going, come on now, get it, get, get a quick stop. Give us another shot at it. Who makes the play? That defense pressure from the Bombers. He's also frustrated Masoli. Here's Rivera. Four or five yards. The Replacement for Andrew Harris. Olivares, it's a nice debut for him mm -hmm. already. No matter how the rest of this game goes, you've, you've seen flashes of what he's capable of. That was a big hit by Cam Kelly coming down to try and stop that run on the line of scrimmage, and he just bounced off that hit. 11 carries, 46 yards for number 20 in the pistol formation. Shotgun for. Polaros stays into block. Polaris gets hammered. Has to eat it. Former Winnipeg Blue Bomber. Von Santos knocks. Knocks Polaros. Two guys coming off the edge. You're going to see them both. Santos knocks inside and outside. Linebacker Cam Kelly. Here they come. And you got to choose one as the tailback. Oliveira, it's got to take inside out. Not, not, hey, one's free, it's pick your poison, but you take the inside out, maybe that outside guy has to bubble a bit and it gives your quarterback a split second. Good kick from Leggio Williams. Dropped 35. Armando Steinauer trying to get his team back in it. On his way to the Hall of Fame, Sarah has more when we come back. Well, before he became a coach, Orlando Steinauer did a lot of this. One of the best covers in the Canadian Football League. Five-time CFL All-Star, Ottawa and Hamilton and Toronto. Two-time Grey Cup champion. Orlando Steinauer is also part of the class of 2021 will be inducted into the Canadian Football Hall of Fame. What an honor. Here is Sarah. Right, you mentioned the accolades that he had in that 13-year playing career he had. He said that when he got the call about going into the hall, he wasn't numb, but it did take a little bit of time for it to be able to set in. He called his family together, and there was a little bit of nervousness because the last time he said that he did that, he told them that they were going down to Fresno State where he was going to be defensive coordinator back in 2017. But a lot of celebration, obviously. It's not why he plays the game, but he was very excited at this opportunity to be able to be acknowledged. I asked Jeremiah Masoli about him, said they've seen video. They know he was a baller out there, but they're so impressed with him as a head coach now and the transition that he's made to be able to get players to buy in, that it's not all about personal accolades, that it's about doing things the right way for team success. They can't say enough good things about their head coach, who will be headed to the Hall of Fame. Class act, class of 2021 with Will Johnson, Nick Lewis, Don Wilson, Mark Levy. Doug Mitchell, Orlando Steinauer, but right now those eyebrows are raised for the Cats. They, this potent offense from a couple of years ago, just not clicking right now. Masoli's been off. He's on the roll now, and he's hunted down. Masoli chucking near sideline, out of bounds though. 
Uh, struggling Hamilton offense out of the locker room. Well, you know, I, I can sit and talk football with Coach Steinauer forever. And, and you, you understand his approach to the game when he was a player has translated right over to his, his approach as a head coach. And, you know, he, he said this, and I, I wrote down about 10 quotes after our Zoom call this week. He's a quote week. machine. Well, it just, but it's, it's his DNA. It's not just quotes that he's right out of a book. It's his DNA. And, and one of them was about building culture. And he said, isn't what you do, it's how you make people feel. And that is exactly what Coach O is all about. Making people feel and understand that they're part of something bigger than themselves. And then going out and doing it together. If you can't play for Orlando Steinauer and like him as a coach, you can't play. Simple. <laughs> well, I just, you know, I mean, he's just one of those guys that you just cling to. You gravitate to. I love what he said also about, you know, to, to inspire people, you don't need signs or PowerPoints. You know, you lead by example. That's what he has done as a player, now as a head coach. His team down 10, five minutes to go third quarter. Crossing pattern here for Bailey. Big body of Rasheed Bailey turns cl close to the 40-yard line. So we're rolling down this third quarter, and one thing I'm going to be looking at because of short camps and the long break and getting their game legs underneath them is, is the stamina of the players heading into the fourth quarter because that's that's where it starts to grab your legs a little bit. And that's where maybe we could see some big plays. Some big plays made either way, not just offensively, but maybe on defense, a guy runs out of gas at the wrong time. Cats need a big defensive play. Kolaros now again in trouble, and he's going down again. Zach is sacked. Simone Lawrence finished him off. Santos knocks in on the play once more. And now the Tiger Cat defense is rising up. Need your, you need your playmakers. To, to make a play and to step up, you, you go to your veterans. Simone gets there. Same conversation with him this week as well. And I loved when he said, you know, when you're when you're living in Hamilton, the fans there will tell you what's going on. Yes. Good or bad. <laughs> he's, he's a character and a pillar in that community. Simone wanted to mention today. Happy birthday to his sister. Oh, nice. He was in we'll Cleveland right. watching. And he's going to become an uncle. So he's expecting. Samandi, happy birthday from Simone today. Now, you just set a precedent. We're in trouble because now every player is going to tell us that. Well, I know. But, <laughs> hey, look, look at the numbers here for Jeremiah because, well, he got off to that great start, as you mentioned, the 84 yards in that first drive. And it's just sort of disappeared since. Now, how do you get that going? Maybe get your running backs involved. Good success on first down, move the chains. Yeah, a few little swing passes, something a little shorter too. There Here is go. that draw play. It's only just one for eight in this corner. Yeah, it's two, it does two things. You get the, the little run up the middle. First of all, you get your guys up front who have been trying to pass protect against Jeff Cope and Jefferson. Well, I don't think they go. Quick tempo, likely first down here, gets to the 50. You, you, you get those guys just firing off. So Tommy Condell understands that. I think he's been one of the best coordinators in the league for a long, long time. And worked with so many different head coaches, so many different philosophies. And, and he's now calling the plays upstairs. And, you know, he knows, get that run going, get the old line firing off and getting some physicality downfield. And you can get your quarterback in a room. Trying to get number 16 engaged as well. Was early on. Masoli. And down he goes. Masoli is sacked. Casey Sales in on the play again. Ohio Bobcat. Omaha, Nebraska. Well, he wants to get in on the action. He splits what looked like a double team. Again, the Ticats without Chris Van Zyl. So 
the second and long. Long 18 yards. Pats need an explosive play. But not happening. It's a fumble. It's Winnipeg football. Brandon Banks caught it. Got it knocked out. And the end of the play was Jonathan Congo on top of the football for the Blue Bombers. And the frustration Ruling mounts the play. for Banks. It's a catch, fumble, first down. Uh, he had it. Biggie's in there, he gets a hit from the outside. Ball is out. Longbow scoops it and the frustration continues for the MOP. Looked so good for Brandon Max early in this ball game. It says it all right there. Every time we out here, man. But I, you know what? I tell you one thing I missed big time. The, the crowd going nuts like they just did. Yes. The defensive play in this in this house erupts. Man, I missed that. <laughs> crowd. They have missed this game too. Look at this. They're, they're dancing. They're having some fun and they're hugging each other and high five. Man, can we all just take a yeah. big breath and just appreciate that alone for a second? Wow. Great to have the game back. All of these people had to show their proof of vaccination coming in tonight. Everybody is sitting right next to each other. Full house. Second and six. Damski can't hang on. So, you know, said it before, Glenn, about, you know, that fatigue factor that might be creeping in here starting to see a couple of those moments well this is a tougher catch than it looks I mean this is he has to twist all the way back around to come and try and pull that one down so that was a real tough catch but you're right and the, and the thing that goes first offensively is this that little bit of lack of concentration when the ball's arriving for receivers the thing on defense that happens when you hit that fatigue mark is missed tackles again and a busy night that he's had. Coverage fourth and final World Golf Championship gets underway Saturday from Memphis Tennessee as the world's top golfers compete at the FedEx St. Jude Invitational catch the third round beginning at 2 Eastern 11 a.m. Pacific on TSN and CTV2. mentioned the Hamilton idea to start maybe running the ball a little bit that's that's it's one thing to say it and it's another thing to execute it against a defense that in 19 number one in the league they gave, they gave up less than 65 yards a game along the ground and a bunch of the core of it is back solely slant Ackland did he get it Officials coming in and saying it was a catch. It's been a big hole. Every possession for Hamilton. Shadows of their goalposts. Hamilton going tempo. And they're going tempo because Mike O'Shea, yeah. Mike O'Shea just threw the, the challenge flag. He, lo he looked at it that was up on the scoreboard. That was a crowd re reacting when they saw it. Yeah, it's only trying to get him to the line quick try and snap the ball before O'Shea could throw the challenge flag. Winnipeg is challenging the previous play of a completed pass feeling it's incomplete. We're about to review. Crowd saw it and reacted so and O'Shea saw it too and then yep yeah that's no catch. No catch. Goes to the ball. Hitting the turf. You can't use the ground to assist you in catching the ball. So Ackland's hands would have to be underneath the football. Ruled out a catch. So a good challenge in game one for Michael O'Shea. One of four this weekend on TSN to start the season that we had hoped would start last year and did not. Delayed. Waited a long time for it to happen, and here we are tonight. This shouldn't take long. After review, 
ruling on the field has been overturned to an incomplete pass. Second down and 10. This has been a struggle for the Cats moving the football in the second half. Inside their 20 yard line for the better part of it offensively. Furthest they've been is their 50 yard line. Now to Banks. Some redemption here, and he's still kind of clutching that area. And he was hit in that first half. So Brandon Banks. Makes the catch on the final play of the third quarter. Heading to the fourth in Winnipeg. Blue Bombers leading 16 to 6 on opening night in the Canadian Football League. Rematch of the 2019 Grey Cup. Bombers like in 2019 leading the way right now. Cats scored in the first possession tonight here at IG Field in the return of the CFL back in Canada. And since that time, it's been all Winnipeg Blue Bombers. It has been all Canadian football, and it's returned tonight. That opening this whole night, man, have we ever missed this? Yeah, special night, emotional night. Great to see the game back on the field. Great to see the fans in the stands. And, and every time I hear a big play, Winnipeg makes a big play, and I hear that crowd erupt. Man, it just it, it sends chills. Shivers. Yeah, it's chills, and and I, you know I don't be over dramatic, but it's oh, been a long be. time. You and can't be. The country needs this. Yeah. Here comes the blitz off the edge. Masoli throwing far side again, and go. once again, Brandon Banks back to back here. Well, I think the bottom line. With, with Brandon Banks, at times he will get frustrated, and we've seen it before. And it's important, I think it's essential for Jeremiah Masoli to keep with him, you know, keep going at it. He knows it. He, he's going to, seven catches, he's going to keep working it and making sure he's not going to eliminate him because he's frustrated. He's slow to get up again, something else. He's their best player. He's the yeah, MOP. Exactly. You got to go to him, but he was nicked up in that first half. Solely play action. And he started tonight off. Ackland. Didn't get much. Maybe two. Almost three yards for Ackland. And a bruising night here. CFL returns to play. Now I'm sure Jeremiah Masoli wants to see if he can test that, that change in the secondary with Alexander coming up and Hallett playing safety, but he's not getting enough time to no. go after the safety. He had loads of time in the first half. Here comes the house again. Look out Masoli on the roll. And throws a dart. Hey, drop the hell. It's Let's incomplete it. drop for under him. Chirping going on down there. Well, maybe over 600 days ago, but that robbery is still there. These are it two is. teams in the Grey Cup. They're they're chirping. They're great on the numbers uh, to make that catch. And he it was a first down. The drive continues. It won't. Is he first game for the Aussie as well? is down to Nelson. He's going to wait, try to draw no yards. You can't be holding! Tell him you can't be holding! Hey, we the best in the West. Y'all got to come to us now. This is your last year playing football. I'm glad, I'm glad that you're having a good time. Nobody's going to want to, bruh. I'm sorry. Well, CFL Wired. Tuesday, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. You hear the sights and sounds from week one of the delayed 2021 season. And when those mics are on. Oliveira again. 
continues to rack up the yardage, 60 yards. Family liking it. President of the fan club. Well, it's it's really exciting coming in and getting that first start for the family and everybody else. And I'm sure that it was a lot of butterflies, but Oliveira, he's, he's settled in now. He's he is he is doing his thing. And what I've noticed right out of the gate, tremendous vision right at the point of attack. He's made some nice cuts right at the point. Polaris fakes the inside pitch. down for Winnipeg in this second half so the the defense is really rising yes up. they have they have they've made some adjustments but now the the, the challenge for Oliveira is to, is to continue to grow so we've seen him run the ball quite well you know I, when you when you took a look at those two blitzers when he, he maybe probably should have taken the inside guy not the outside guy that'll be an adjustment that he'll make and now how does he catch the ball? Because they're going to need him to do that too. Delay draw for Oliveira. Pumping those legs now. First down for the Winnipeg kid. See, that's what I mean about his vision. I mean, he can... That, that play was supposed to go B-gap between guard and tackle. The gap between the left guard and the left tackle here. But he sees it at the point of attack. You see him right in the middle of your screen there, number 20. Now he's going to... Make that cut. He's got a big hole at the line. Now watch this one. Stiff arm, push out. He probably learned that from Andrew Harris, one of the best stiff arm players, running backs in the game. So, you know, we've seen a lot of the magic when it comes to running the ball. Now, the next progression is catching it out of the backfield. Harris Harris watching tonight. Trying to get healthy, trying to get back in the lineup. We haven't seen the Andrew Harris high hurdle yet from Randy well, Oliveira. Never know. Could be in there, yeah. yeah might be part of the repertoire. Channing Stribling is down on the far side as he is down. We'll step aside here on opening night. A beautiful night in Winnipeg. on that D line for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Dylan Wynn is is out at this point point and Mason Bennett has taken over for him in the interior Dylan Wynn coming off that career best year. Looks like Desmond Lawrence playing the secondary as well. Extremely got a look at that cut by the kid. Oliveira again. Vision vision vision. Man. It's great to watch. It's just an outstanding cut, and, and this this is just instinct and and seeing the hole just before it opens. That bounce to the outside. Simone Lawrence had plugged the hole and stepped up in there. And Oliveira, let's see how how's mom? Is mom happy? Oh yeah. There you go. Jersey sales might be increasing <laughs> by the end of the night. Family and friends, a few more. 100 yards from scrimmage. 12 away from 100 on the ground. Almost got it right there. There's a flag in the backfield. I think that one may be coming back. Simone Lawrence stepped up and, and was tackled right at the line of scrimmage. Didn't catch the number of the offensive linemen. But Maybe it's not. What did the officials say? Illegal block, blocking below the waist. Hamilton, number 21. Wow. Pelde will okay. the climb. Wow. Play results in the first so down. That almost 100 yards now. Simone Lawrence. Penalized. You can't go low. And, and Lawrence, that's why he was. It looked like he was tackled. 
the old lineman was on top of him because he cut him out at the knee. Now one of the greatest Canadian running backs ever on the sideline for the Blue Bombers watching his apprentice who's one yard away from 100. 100 and counting for Brady Oliveira. An effort to make the game safer, Rod, you're, 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 you're going to see. We're going to go back to that Simone Lawrence penalty. And basically, in football, you want to take the low hits out of the game. And that's that's been the, the driving force and rule changes. And Simone goes down, the pulling guard coming around, and he's just going to go right down low. And that's why it looked like he got tackled and pulled yeah. down. That's what I thought was I the holding call. About. But 21's outside, comes in, he can't block down like that one. Well, they can hear them talking on the sideline. Well, Simone Lawrence was outside of the box, that tackle box, the line of scrimmage, and then came into it and went low. Here comes the house. There goes the ball. And Nelson inside the 10. Spread tonight. Nice throw by by Zach, and look at the time in the pocket he has. Oliveira in there stepping up. He has his man. He's helping out where he needs to be. Again, there's there's sort of a checklist of things you go through to make sure that the running back is doing all that he's supposed to do. That's a nice block. Oliveira stays Go! in. There's Nelson again. This is the first trip into the red zone inside the 20-yard line for either team tonight. And that says a lot, speaks a lot about the defense in this game. Keeping teams away from moving footballs inside that 20-yard line. And Winnipeg's threatening right now, ninth play of the drive. But they designed something here for the local product. It's over 100 yards on the ground. Polaris going to change and flags fly. Procedure. Winnipeg, number 66, five yard penalty. Green second down. Stanley Bryant knows it. And, and this play, I, I'm just going to guess here. I, I'm going to guess because we didn't see the play run. But by that reaction from Andrew Harris, that was a running play to Brady. And Brady was going to, he, he was he was looking for his backup tailback who's starting tonight to score. And Stanley Bryant got the procedure call. So push him back. Second and goal, Polaris. Here comes the heat. And caught. Short of the goal line, it's been Lawler. Kenny Lawler, two touchdowns tonight. Most outstanding rookie for Winnipeg two years ago. Polaris wincing. Field goal unit comes out. But hey, both teams have been pretty good in the penalty department tonight. There's been a couple, but you can see the impact that even a little five-yard procedure penalty can have on your Big team. Time. You're on the doorstep, ready to walk in or go and score. And the procedure call pushes you back. Got a good pass rush. It's third down, and you're kicking a field goal rather than the major. Tyler Crepinia. Point afters that were good tonight. A little chippy here from a bit of an awkward angle, but he will bury that. First field goal as a Winnipeg Blue Bomber. They extend the lead. Champs unveil their banner and they have the lead tonight at Winnipeg. Midway through the fourth quarter. Cats down. They need Brandon Banks who got hurt on this play early on by Nick Taylor. And then this, as he was throwing it to the official, that yeah. was a complete accident, but just has not been able to get unglued. Well, yeah, he's, he's taken a couple of hits, been a little bit banged up and slow to get up a couple of times. We've seen the frustration, but he is still their playmaker. 
and there he's is explosive. lots of time, and he is explosive. He is Brandon Banks. We've seen him do it before. Change his games. That was a awkward play. The way it stopped and started. But there was a communication issue. Not a couple of yards on the play. in the favor for Hamilton. They need a score. They got to get some points. Have not been on the board since the opening drive when they looked electric. And knocked down again, Sean Thomas Erlington. This does not look like that team, Cats team that led in most offensive categories back when we last saw you in 2019. Well, one of the things that one of the things that happens with the quarterback even even a veteran quarterback when you get that pressure over a couple of quarters your timing and your you're not just quite as comfortable in that pocket and that was a throw there was hands across and coverage in the area short of a first down and so couldn't make it happen. Charles Nelson the return to Winnipeg 19 to 6 the Manitoba Capitol. We have liftoff tonight and tomorrow night. Lions Riders at Mosaic. Argo Stamps Saturday doubleheader in the Edmonton Elks. Love that new look. Love the logo. And the Ottawa Red Blacks. How about the helmets? I, I, I'm Love a fan them. of the helmets. Yeah, big time. With the elk horns up there. Yes, big time. Big nice. fan of this shot tonight, too. High over. IG Field. Blue Bomber fans enjoying this one tonight. 19 to 6. What a night it's been for this young man. They think they'd like to cap it off with, I'm sure, if they can get Brady Oliveira his first CFL touchdown. I think that was the MO in that last drive. Didn't quite work out. Over 100 yards rushing. His first start. 110. Five and a half to go. He put more points up here and they might be able to put that W in the column. And a wrap to this one. Again, Oliveira just running over that cat front line. Well, we got to start. Yeah, we got to start giving credit where credit's due. So you start with that the big boys up front because they're creating the holes for Oliveira to to get that hundred yards. And this is against Jaguar Davis, Dylan Wynn for most of the game. So you got Couture at the center, Pat Newfelt, Jamarcus Hardrick, and Stanley Bryan outside. Drew Desarlais in the guard position, and. We haven't talked to Garrett Davis got that sack just before the half. We haven't talked a lot about him, and that is a dominant football player in our league. Here he goes again. That time, nowhere. That was a necessary tackle that time. Santos knocks. Santos knocks again. And now a big play. Cats need to stop here if they have any chance. You know, four. Four years in the league for Santos Knox, and I asked Simone Lawrence about how that combination between him and Lawrence is going. He said, hey, we compete to get to the football. It's going to be a race. They need to get there in a hurry on this play. They've gone to Oliveira a lot. Second and nine. So they go to the air here, Calaris. Trying to extend this drive. He will. Polaris takes off up the middle right at the midfield stripe, the 55-yard line, and the Bombers will indeed be stopped and will have to kick the ball. The Cats are going to have to find a way to get this ball into the end zone. We are still not done here, even though Winnipeg has really dominated. That was an edge blitz from, from the secondary in Jamal Roll that, that forced... Clarles up into the middle. 
Coach O, Coach O needed the, the play there, and, and outside pressure was picked up, but it forced Kalaros to run. Mark Leggio on legs. Shortish kick. It's a good bounce. Oh, a couple of great bounces. Look at that. Frankie Williams can only pick it up and try to get a couple of yards. And once again, another very long field. 48 yarder for the rookie. What a night for another kid. Century Mark and more. Local product. Winnipeg born and raised. Brady Oliveira coming up big tonight for the Blue Bombers. Two minutes and 39 seconds remain in the fourth quarter, and the defending Great Cup champions will have another win over their nemesis from the East in the 2019 Great Cup. Jeremiah Masoli, who didn't play in that game, off to a great start here tonight, but since that time, Cats have been held empty and not caught. Needed an explosive play. They need something here. Marcus Tucker can't come up with it. You know, he had a shot. He was on the post route deep, and he got in behind the safety. And this is what we talked about with that change with Brandon Alexander coming down to the linebacker and Hallett having to go play safety. Could Jeremiah Masoli test him? That's just a drop pass and a chance for a big, big play to give him some hope through the hands. A couple of drops in the second half. Cut. Must make here. Cats are playing three down football. Masoli telling people to come back, come back. Close to the first down marker for Tucker. This time hangs on. I'm not sure they're going to give him the first down or will they? And they are a little bit shy, so third down. Bring in a couple of big bodies, get the first down. And Never know. It is. It is the CFL. Oh, hey! Right, anything can happen. Whoa. We've seen it here in this building. Yeah. You, you can score three times in two minutes. Yes, you can. In case you forgot that over the last 620 days, <laughs> it's the Canadian Football League. Boy, only needed a little extra push. He got it. Tough night for some players. Banged up. Of injuries. I mentioned different guys' offices. Tackle to tackle. This is this is Big Hill's office. Look at that. <laughs> Big Hill. Biggie going right over the top. Prior to the snap, Winnipeg called timeout. Perfect thanks. Adam Big Hill just as his coach says, he's just a stud. The guy who's <laughs> yeah. most outstanding defensive player. Think about his life, how he juggles. He does so much community work and charity work. He's a doting dad. He is one of the greatest players this league has seen in a long time. Constantly, on, he's busy in, in the financial sector yes. on a day-to-day -day basis. And he is one of those leaders here. Yeah, you, don't wanna, you, don't want, you don't want to switch daytimers with that old big deal. Okay, 64. I don't know how he does that in 24 hours, but he gets a lot out of it. Well, he needs to. I mean, you can you can tell him, look at him talk to his teammates. I mean, this is this is all the time, making sure they're all right, making sure they know their assignments, getting them fired up, and then he locks in. Now he just goes through his reads, the snap of the ball, execute assignment. Soli will get the first down after the timeout that was called. 2.15, but Hamilton needs something explosive. And some speedy first personnel down now. Jalen Marshall comes in. Likely going to see some Acklin. Trying to free Speedy B. There's Marshall here, seven 
taking off as well. Here comes the rush off the edge, and Masoli had to throw it away incomplete. Otherwise, he was going down and would have been sacked. Good work, Cross Lions. Good and that was Jackson Jeffcoat going inside, and he makes an inside move here on Tate. Watch him step up the field and then cut inside, and he gives all kinds of problems to Masoli. Jim Jeff Coat, the Dallas Cowboy, his father, grew up with the game. I mentioned him a couple of times as a bookend to Willie, but he could lead a defense all by himself. Thank you very much. Hanging around those locker rooms, championship locker rooms. Masoli still Good. out of time. Delivers, though, and Tucker went backwards and actually maybe the lunch will give him the first down. Looks like it will. If they mark it right there, They'll move the sticks. Get a man that size, 6'3", just shy of 260 to be able to move his feet and his arms. Look at how quickly he got back up off that one knee, got kind of slipped on the edge, got back up, got back in the fight. And it's 50 to go. All the ballers are giving them is something underneath, go! like this. There's Thomas Erlington. Staying on his feet, lunging again. That should be another first down, but the clock is the enemy right now for the Cats. They have to score here. Need an onside kick and more. Gonna find the end zone in a hurry. Frustrating night for the offense. Four receivers to the right. Comes Combo. Nice grab by Jalen Marshall. Short of a first down, but at the 55 yard line. Quickly line up once more. Boyan Masoli's first game in a couple of years. Look out, Masoli. Acklin. Calls it in, first down again. Eight up 11 more seconds. You know, I, I we talked to Coach O before the game in, in our Zoom calls about that competition between Dane Evans. I just want to revisit it because, you know, Coach Steinauer was, was adamant in telling us that he talked to Masoli, and I'm sure some Hamilton fans said, hey, when the offense struggles, should they have made a change? Because you basically have two starters. Oh, picked up. That'll be the ball game. And down the sideline goes the newcomer, Chantrell Rockamore. Rockham sock him through it right to him. Yes, it was. Back paddling the, to his left in that back pedal. Second pick of the night. And the rookie, the Rock, Rockamore has his first CFL interception. An easy one to boot. Uh, he had Willie Jefferson in his face, and Masoli, because of that, couldn't see or throw it around him, and throws it right to Rockamore, takes it down the sideline. You know, again, Coach Steinauer didn't want a, a Mazzoli that was looking over his shoulder if things, if he had some issues. You remember that first interception in the first half by Willie Jefferson, another key play. Well, they'll have a lot of Brady Oliveira likely here. Maybe try to punch one home for the kid. Well, let's take a look at the debut. Like, I mean, it's pretty impressive. 21 carries, 120 yards. Nice, fat 6.5 yard average. And, and I, I can't tell you the level of nerves he must have been going through. I mean, everybody remembers that first game, you know, regardless of how you do good or bad in the game, the mistakes you made and the production you, you create. But when you walk on the field, you don't feel like you're feeling your feet in the first game. And your first start. And Oliveira, you know, he jumpy at the beginning, settled in. 120 yards rushing. Bombers will put this away as they did the Grey Cup. Second and six, Oliveira once more. You know, you're looking at that clock. 
Maybe give it to him one more time, but you really don't have to. Likely won't find the end zone. That kid said before this game he was going to be pumped up. He'll never forget it. Think about the last time he was in a home opener and played. He did not start. A couple of years ago, broke his leg. Right. What a difference a couple of years make for Brady Oliveira. And, you know, a guy I'm sure he's looked up to. As a young player, Andrew Harris. The Bombers of team will not take it to the house. There was no comeback tonight in this ball game in a league. That's full of exciting comebacks. The partner, this was one of the biggest comebacks in CFL history. Coming back and playing tonight. Great appreciation for the game, for being able to gather, cheer for your team, cheer for your colors. Crowd was absolutely awesome tonight here in Winnipeg. Boy, it's great to have football back. And maybe, it's, it can help and just take a, a little step in, in bringing our whole country together. Together is the theme. That's what the Blue Bombers did tonight. Hamilton scored early and never scored another point after that. It was all Winnipeg. Kenny Lawler, a pair of touchdowns. Zach Kalaros, Hall of Famers meet. They'll meet again. The rematch of the 2019 in the Grey Cup. The Bombers put 19 on the board in the opener of 2021 the cfl is back man is it great to be back the league returns more football this weekend bombers win the champs are back the banner is up and a new season has begun and isn't it sweet good night everybody from winnipeg here comes sports center